Hello everyone, welcome to example 5. We're going to take a look at geometric series and the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. Now whenever you hear geometric, we remember back to section 9.3, we're going to talk about r. When we hear series, we're going to add the terms of a sequence. So where a sequence is just a list of numbers, when we start to look at series, we're adding those terms in the sequence. So when we add the first n terms, we might add the first two terms of the sequence together, maybe the first three, the first seven, the first 29. Whatever it is, it's a finite number of terms we're adding up. So the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence is a geometric series. If a geometric series has first term a sub 1, and a common ratio r, then the sum, s sub n, of the first n terms is given by the following. So we'll get s sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n in ratio to 1 minus r, as long as r isn't 1. Right? We can't have that equilibrium happening. All right, so with that, let's take a look. It says use the formula for the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series. All right, and let's go ahead and use this formula to find the indicated partial sum of the geometric series. All right, so I would like a partial sum meaning, when I say partial, it's finite. I only want to add the first 20 terms of the sequence. So we know this is a sub 1. I'm adding to it a sub 2, a sub 3, and really I want to add up to a sub 20. I just don't have a sub 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 20. I, I could get them, Right? And then I could add up those 20 terms, but let's use the formulas to just make things a little bit more efficient. So I've got a geometric series. It's stated here, which means we need to be able to find the common ratio. All right, I would like to find that R value because that will be extremely helpful moving forward. Well, how do I find that common ratio? Well, you can take any two terms and put them in ratio as long as it's the more recent term in ratio to the preceding term. So I'll look at a sub 2 in ratio to a sub 1. I get 500 over 1,000, or my r value is 1 half. So let's start to keep track of what I have. I know r is equal to 1 half. Right? I know that a sub 1 is equal to 1,000. I put a little bigger separator bar there. And then specifically, I know that n is equal to 20. And that's great because, like always, we have four variables, right? We have s sub n, we have a sub 1, we have r, and we have n. Well, I was given three of those. I was given the r value, I was given a sub 1, I was given that n was 20, so I can find s sub 20. I'm just going to plug it into the formula and see what pops back out. So we're going to get s sub 20 should be equal to a sub 1, times 1 minus r to the, oops, not to the n, to the 20th, right, in ratio to 1 minus r. So let's see what we have. We have a sub 1, which was 1,000, times 1 minus 1 half raised to the 20th power, all over 1 minus 1 half. All right, now let me scooch that up just a bit so that we can see it. Sorry about that. All right, so let's see if we can crunch this number on our calculator and figure out the answer. Now, I'm going to do the numerator first, and I'm going to start with inside my grouping symbols. So I'm going to do 1 minus, this would be 1 half to the 20th. All right, there we go. I'm going to multiply that by, oops, multiply that by 1,000. And then I'm going to divide that by 1 minus 1 half. And I'm putting parentheses around that denominator because it's a binomial. I've got two terms, so I need to pr protect it. And it looks like I'm getting 1999.998. So it's getting pretty close to 2000. It's not there yet. I'll talk a little bit later how if this was an infinite series, our answer would have been 2000. But it's not an infinite series. It's finite. We're only adding the first 20 terms. All right. So we've got our first look at a finite geometric series. We've got our formula that's governing us. Keep in mind, a sub 1, starting number, your initial value, r, your common ratio, n, the number of terms you want to add, and s sub n, the total of those first n terms. 
All right, so with that, let's flip the page and keep on working this formula. I'll see you in a bit, gang. Bye.